for 15 to 25? 15 to 25. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite. Uh, you guys, the real listeners will get it. Most of you all, but real listeners will get it. Go ahead, Pop. So let's kick off this next segment. So now we've talked kind of buy or sell, right? So now we're going to talk about we're not going to do full-on mock draft. We're not. Sorry. I know a not lot of you guys are going, going crazy on Twitter with the you've been doing it since uh, – since November of last year, you've been doing your mock drafts, but we're not quite there yet. But we give you the mock draft the week before the draft. That's what we do. We're preparing. We're in the lab. We're watching tape. We're not ready to come out with it yet. What's the reason? We're like we're like God and Peters. We're not divulging our secrets. No, we play. We're gonna give to you the exactly. mock draft when it's time for the draft. We're playing it close to the jacket, but. Let's get into this. So how should we use our top six picks? That's basically the segment here. We're going to talk about mostly position groups. If you've got names ready and you want to shout them out, go ahead. I'll tell you, I don't have that many. Um, <laughs> no. But we've got round one, pick number two, round two, 35, round two again, pick number 40, round three, pick 66, and round three, pick number 100. What do you want to do with these picks, Pop? I mean, we are rich in draft picks. So I think round number one, Jane Daniels, quarterback, maybe Drake May, but probably Jane Daniels. I think we don't need to talk anymore about that. Am I right? Right. Cool. So now we get into round two. You've got. Now, hold on a second, though. That doesn't add up to six. I think I'm missing the, the pick we picked up for Sam. I think that is pick a hundred. Um, no, that was the, that was the pick we picked up for. Uh, is it seventy eight? I did. I, I did my same thing where I where I picked up an old article. Sorry, as if uh, as if there, Floyd doesn't there was a have lot of there was a, there was a lot going on. It's seven, number seventy eight from Seattle. So we are look at the we're missing seventy eight from Seattle. Look yeah. at the poll from the boy. I'm not editing that out just for that. Hey, it was, we that, caught baby. it. We caught it. So, keep you know. It. Keep it. All right. So, yeah. again, let, we'll get to that when we get to round three. Right now, round two, 35-40. What do you want to do, Pop? What do you like there? How, where, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think now? we're both we, – we've already tipped our hand, right? We're both going quarterback and number two, right? Yeah. So, what I want to do next, what I want to do next is I want to package one of our seconds. I'll call it number 35. And one of our thirds, let me call it number 78. So I'm going to burn those two picks yep. to move up into the first round and pick an offensive tackle in the first round. That's what I want. There it is. And there if it, it ends up being 35 and 66, so be it. I'm trying to be optimistic here. But I want to take one of our seconds, one of our thirds, package them together, move up later in the first round, and go after offensive tackle. I would like to get – even more aggressive than you. I would like to package up 35 and 40. And if we got to give them something from next year, give them something from next year. And I would like to get either Alt or uh, Fashanu, one of those two guys, and go get a stud. Go get a stud. You're just going to have to move up. Very, to go get you're going to have to get up really high in the draft to do that, though, right? If you're going to go get a tackle, go get the tackle. That's my thing. Don't go get yeah. the number three or four guy on your board. Go get the guy. I mean, it makes a lot you of sense. spend assets and do it. Go do it. It makes a lot of sense, right? Because you're, you know, to, to pair that that quarterback with an offensive tackle that he can play with, you know, if our prayers are finally answered for the next ten years, yeah, that'd be pretty amazing if you could pull that off. And if you know, Magic Johnson yeah. is sprinkling his his magic dust on this team um, for yeah. something like that to happen would be pretty amazing. I wouldn't hate that at all. Wouldn't it hate that feels, at all. It feels a little Madden franchise modey to me. Like it just feels a little too good to be true. But let's say we stick there, right? But, not, but, but think about it. If you go those two picks and a second from next year to, to move up, one, I think that's pretty good trade capital for the team that's trading with you. Yeah. But secondly, I think it's worth it to go get that offensive tackle. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Should we stay? You're definitely going tackle with one of those two picks. Are you going tackle cornerback, tackle tight end, 
tackle edge rusher. Well, we're not. So we the, already said we're. You got to stick with your thoughts. All right. I, I've so burned taking, my two picks. You burn. You've burned number thirty-five and forty. I've burned thirty-five and seventy-eight. Yeah. Let's stick with that. So now we've got. What would that be? Now we've used three of them. We got three to go. What Pop's do we want to do with those remaining three picks? Pop's got a hot date, man. Blazing through this thing. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. I like it. I like it. Thirty-five and forty. Off the board. Not necessarily what I would have done had I known this how we're doing this. Hot date cool. with my right. beautiful wife to have dinner with my beautiful wife. Let's just be clear. Of course. In case she's listening. Yeah. River Hill Grill about to get torn up. <laughs> Let's get into it. Round three. Pick number 66. You got pick 78. You got pick 100. Where are you looking to attack here in this round, Pop? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at positions of need and we've addressed offensive line, offensive tackle, I think they've got to get a cornerback. And I think, yep. you know, I'm hoping that we at least keep that one of those second round picks. I think I go corner there. And you had said it very well in our last podcast. You get a starter, right? You know, you could get a starter. And, um, you know, corners kind of tend to come off the board, you know, early at times. But I think if I could get cornerback and maybe a guy that can get in there and contribute because it's such a position of need. Um, at this time. So I think I got to go corner as my next priority. There. Yeah, I'm going probably tight end and corner with those. And we have three picks. So tight end corner, best player available would be my my move. And I don't mind if you want to go see. Nah, I can't, you can't get, I can't have best player corner. available in this sequence. I need a position. Well, Tight end corner, well, and who would you go with? I'm saying best player available just because the roster is in such a position that, like, if there's a wide receiver you love there. Take a wide receiver. If there's uh, if there's another tackle you love there, take another tackle. If there's a guard you love there, go guard. If there's an edge rusher you love there, go edge rusher. Like I think once you get from the top three positions, but who would you want need, that? What position would you want that plus player available to be in? So let, let's just say you said tight end, you said corner, you got one more to burn. Who would you want that to be? Kind of don't care. Wide receiver. Yeah, and a wide I mean, out. We need a little help at wide out. See if there's a great slot receiver on the board there. Too. Yeah, that's, for me, that's where I'd like to be. I, I think a little bit of laden witness there, but I, I'd like, you know, with those three picks left, um, you know, I said cornerback already. I'd like, you know, I, I'm kind of torn between tight end and and receiver. You know, I think it's I would both. almost go with best best player available between those two positions at that point. And if you get a receiver that you really, really like, I'm good with it. Um, but yeah, I think I think wide receiver and tight end would be my next two choices. And, yeah. and you could flip the order based on the player you like the best um, out of those positions, I think. There you go. So, all right, now we're at the end of the segment. We've covered the format. Pop, I want to spin this one back on you. I'm sorry. I can't let this go. We keep picks 35 and 40. Do you want to get a pair of tackles? Do you want to go tackle tight end? What do you want to do there if we keep those two picks? We got. I think, it, I think if we, we kept those, I think if we kept those two picks, I would. And I, and I'm now I'm dealing with four instead of three. I'd use one of them on a tackle and one of them on an offensive lineman, and that could be best player available again, um, yeah. whether it's guard or tackle. But I would continue to. Invest their line. Although edge, we haven't talked about edge. Maybe maybe edge is something we need to be thinking about here. What do you yeah. think? So that's that's where I'm at. I would go right. I would go tackle corner. I think I'd go edge tackle edge. edge. Yeah. I go tackle corner and then edge in the third round and swap Agreed. the corner out. Tackle Agreed. corner edge. Um because I think in that order, those are the three most important positions of football other than quarterback person. So if you go tackle corner edge we still got two more to burn. Tackle corner in edge. round three, tight end wide receiver. Okay, I'm with yeah, you there. That's that's where I'm at, and I think I'm with that's you there. What most likely will happen. I also don't think going 35, 40 tackle tackle is out of the question. If you got two guys you like, f it. You need two tackles. The only guy you have in the building is Cornelius Lucas. Get both of them. Let one of them bench. One of them plays. Like I, I'm not against tackle tackle there. Um, but I think that's, I mean, that's about it for that. I got a question for you since we got a little bit of time here. 
I got a question for you. All right. So I want to get our quarterback talk in, right? We haven't talked too much about it. We said we think, you know, we haven't really named who we think that pick should be at number two, right? So now draft, I think I've said, I think it's Daniels. You're, we've been a little bit more on the fence between Daniels and Bay. That's okay. We could save that for the mock draft. Sure. But what's your position on playing or sitting this number two pick in the draft in year one? Because there's more buzz out there about sitting this player and letting him learn behind number zero on your program, number one in your hearts, Marcus Mariota, who you know I love so much. Yeah, what's number your position zero in your on, heart, too. <laughs> what's your position on whether we should play or sit this rookie QB in year one? Play him. F it. I, it's, if it's Daniels, you play him. If it's May or McCarthy, maybe you think about sitting him. I think May, maybe you definitely. If it's Daniels, you play him. If it's May, plan to sit him. If it's McCarthy, see where he's at. And then maybe you play him. Maybe you sit him. Could be 50 50 on that. And then if it's Penix or Knicks, play him. Whatever. You know, if we shock the world. But I, I, I think I, we're I, I think we're just in a position. I don't I personally and everyone's got a right to their opinion for sure. And I know that developing this quarterback for a year two, three, four, five is probably the most important thing we can do. Yeah. I'm just not seeing the upside and not playing them right and developing them. What this season isn't so much about wins and losses. And I know you talk about well, you don't want to ruin the kid. And maybe we're all feeling some scars from last year with Sam. One, you know, as much as I've argued in Sam's favor, we've said all along that was a that was a bit of a hail mary on Ron Rivera's part, right? It was a fifth round pick. We're not talking Who about the number. For a year. He sat for a year right. and still got ruined. We're, so. we're not talking about the number two pick in the draft now. He's a guy that was buried, buried, buried on the depth chart. I don't think they had any thought of him being the guy until he accidentally ended up playing in that last game, right? And then all of a sudden, wow, what did Ron say? F, if I knew the kid was that good. Oh, my gosh. Um, reliving the horrors. But, you know, I think it's I think this could be different in the sense of if you coach him up right and you rely on that running game, and, you know, and you break it down into, you know, credit to Dan Jeremiah, I've used this one before in previous pods, but you break it up into thirds. You got your run game taking 50% of the snaps in the, in the game, right? Or if you're staying pretty balanced or maybe it's 40%. You give them some layups. You give them some screen passes. You give them some easy throws. You give them some rollouts. You let them use his legs. And then you limit the amount of times he's in that drop back game and you're putting that pressure on him. And what that also does is it keeps the defense back on their heels. So when he's dropping back, he's not under the level of pressure or duress. And you know what? You stick to that, even if it's not completely working, even if there's stuff in the run. You just don't put him in harm's way and maybe continue to focus on beefing up that defense, letting that defense keep you in games and being competitive. If it's about developing the quarterback, not so much about wins and losses this year, and hopefully on your way to developing the quarterback, you get some wins racked up on the board. I think that for me, play him. Yeah, play him. I agree. I agree. I, I play him right off the bat. Let the boy eat. Do the good stuff, um, especially. And that's why I kind of broke it down into like Daniels. You definitely play because with the RPO, with the legs you have more options in terms of taking more things off of his plate and letting him grow slowly, you know? So you're able to play him right away and also let him develop as if he was sitting and start working more complicated things into the playbook later on in the year. So that Daniels, without a doubt, play him. When you get into May and McCarthy, you look at May, who's a guy that might not be ready tomorrow, but has elite talent. He has it all. You just don't know how ready he is or how, how much access he has to that talent. So that's one where I don't hate if you sit him for a year, because like you said, we're not planning on competing this year anyways. So if you look at the kid and you go, look, he's raw, 
but he's unbelievable. I mean, the plan was not to start Justin Herbert, right? Justin Herbert got thrown in, and that team still stunk no matter how good Herbert was that year. He got thrown into the fire. That was not the plan. So if you didn't think that guy was ready, is he came out of it all right? He came out of it all right. Yeah, he came out of it amazing. But is May? What I'm saying is, if the plan was not to start Herbert and Herbert wasn't ready, is May ready? And you know, barring a a needle puncturing Marcus Mariota's lung, does May get that year? And then does May hit the ground running with a team a little more ready to compete in a year? Who knows? Um, And McCarthy, I just am so back and forth on him. I know he ran a more pro style offense in Michigan, but can he adapt? And is he ready to come run that offense in the NFL? I don't know. So, and if you trade back, you figure maybe you got some more assets to surround him with. So maybe you're really not planning on winning this year. So then sit him. Why not? I don't know. It's a lot. It's a great question. Again, stating the obvious, right? It's hard to make an argument for picking May over Daniels. If your argument is sit May for a year, play Daniels right away. Because I think there's, it'd be hard for me to say the potential, the upside of May is greater than the upside of Daniels. Like I think, you know, we don't know. I mean, that's a reality, right? We don't, we don't know yeah. how good these guys are going to be or not going to be. We, we really just don't. It's, it's. Yeah. We're not going to know until they're out there. We get excited by, you know, the potential of the excitement of somebody like a Daniels kind of intoxicates you a bit, right? Yeah. But I but I think like I just think it's different this year because it's not just Kingsbury, it's Lynn, it's Johnson, it's Tavita Pritchard. There's just a there's a there's a group there that I I think it's also Dan Quinn. I think Dan Quinn's gonna set a tone and use that experience that he's has that say, look, let's take the pressure off this young man. Let's make sure we've got a balanced attack and make things as easy as we can on him. And I think that's going to be the case. And I, I, if it's Drake May, if they convince themselves Drake May is a better pick, play him. That's that's just my opinion. Get him Fair out enough. there again. Coach him up. Take the pressure on him. Let him build game by game, week by week. And you know, I, I have I have confidence in this coaching staff to to be able to do that. Yeah. Fair enough. I like that. Um, I think I'm with you on that. All things considered, uh, and yeah, man, it's it's going to be really interesting. I think I, I the more and more we talk about this, I'm starting to feel like Daniels is the uh, is the right is the right move here at number two. And I think if you look at if you read the tea leaves in terms of the way they've done their free agency signings and things of that nature, a lot of one year deals, a lot of two year deals. They're signing guys, in my opinion, as if they're ready to go play number two and to be in position where, Hey, if we're, if we land a CJ Stroud, now we have a ton of cap space next year and we're going to be a really attractive destination for people. So we're going to spend out our nose and load up on some studs next year. They're kind of putting themselves in that position where sure. like, we got to know I, I, and see what we have going into next year's off season. And, and, and there's an argument, like if you look at it for the future, right? Not that you want next year to be a tank. And I, I don't think that they're, building the roster that way. You know, like I think they're building a very competitive roster is what I'm seeing. I don't think you bring those vets in to tank. They wouldn't want to be yeah. here They, you know, if we were sold on it. But I think it's another argument for developing that quarterback because what's the worst thing that happens in the world? You end up being a five or six win team with a developing quarterback that you're seeing signs of improvement on. And then now yeah. you can go draft a stud wide receiver or, you know, dynamic playmaker um, with that, you know, sixth or seventh pick in the draft, right, or fifth or sixth pick in the draft, that could, like that's almost like a worst case scenario, kind of best case scenario that comes out of it. And as far as all those one year deals, you know, it's a great point by you. A little bit different subject. I think you've got a bunch of guys on prove it deals, right? And maybe yeah. only keep half those guys. Maybe only keep a third of those guys. Maybe only end up re-signing two or three of them. But it fits what Adam Peters said about wanting to build through the draft, right? Because he's yep. just creating that flexibility. And I think what he's doing, you'll see us for the next few years have a lot of salary cap space to be able to re-sign our own guys as we go forward. Yep. So, 100%. Yeah, yeah a lot of, lot of interesting stuff here, a lot of factors at play. But 
all in all, I say we wrap this thing up, Pop. I think we uh, leave this one a little bit more on the concise side, let the people know our opinions. And, uh, guys, we're looking forward to getting back at it. Once you hear from us next time, it's going to be pretty close to draft season. It's going to be uh, up. It up. It's going to be time to get after it. So I cannot wait. I don't know about you. And uh, without further ado, let's wrap this thing up, Pop. I've been Dom. This is Pop. Thanks for another great week, everybody.